Nicola Stonehouse joins us now from Leeds in the United Kingdom. She's a professor of molecular virology at the University of Leeds. Professor, good to have you on the program with us. Five months on, what do we know about coronavirus and also what do we not yet know about it? So I think there's been an enormous amount of work um, that's been started and that's still ongoing. Um, moves towards a vaccine have been unprecedented. Um, we still aren't there. It's still all in the development stage. But um, the advances that have been made towards the vaccine would have been unthought of um, a year or so ago. So we know um, a lot about the biology of the virus. We still don't know about how long we get protective antibodies for. Um, and indeed, you know, how well protected you are. Um, against a subsequent infection if you've had um, COVID-19 already. We do know that the virus doesn't change a lot, and that's good news. So um, even if the protection that you get isn't great, probably you're going to have some protection against the subsequent infection. So we're learning things really, you know, every day, every week, something new comes out. Right. And how important is testing and contact tracing in controlling outbreaks? incredibly important. Um, I think South Korea showed that really, really elegantly. Um, some countries have done that really well, um, Germany as well, for example. Um, the UK, unfortunately, hasn't. Um, the UK took a long time to uh, upscale testing. And we have done that now, but we're still not effectively contact tracing. Um, and by contact tracing, you really need not just to find people who've been in touch, um, in contact with infected individuals, but you need to test those people, not just tell them to stay at home. So some countries have done that really well, other countries not so well. Um, and I think that does reflect to a large degree in the impact of, of the um, pandemic in those countries. Yeah, and we have seen varied degrees of impact in, in many countries. How can we be better prepared uh, for the future, especially if there are you know, a second wave and, and future outbreaks? So, so at the moment, we, we don't know whether there's, whether there's going to be a second wave. We're basing that really um, on what happened in the last major pandemic that we had, which would be the flu pandemic um, 100 years ago, in which there was a major um, second wave um, and different levels of second wave in, in, in different places. So there could be. Um, what we need to do is we've got to be better prepared. We've got to be better prepared if there is a second wave. We've got um, um, worldwide to improve testing um, and to, to use the good examples that have been set by, by some countries um, across the world. And if there isn't a second wave and this virus does manage, you know, we manage to control this, there is always going to be another outbreak of something. Um, we need a proper pandemic preparedness plan. Um, many countries have had this, but not everybody has actually put it into action. So we need a proper plan and we need to put it into action and we need to work very closely um, as, as um, with the World Health Organization in order to get this um, put into place. Yeah, preparedness is so critical. Thank you so much, Professor Nicola Stonehouse. Thank you.